How's everybody doing? Good. I need to teach you guys how to do affirmations. <laughs> Not the words. It's the energy. The energy. Right? I'm, 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 I'm just in shock. I was back there going, am I that far off? <laughs> Speak up. <laughs> right. Parker, I should really hear you back there, and I'm only three feet away from you. You got right. it. All right. I'm serious. I'm, 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 I, the, do you know what affirmations are supposed to do? Can anybody tell me? Excited. Shock you into excitement. Energize you. <laughs> Make you believe in them. Yeah. I mean, everything you're saying is right. But just remember this. There's nothing in your life that you remember. Think about your past. Think about anything that's happened in your past. And why do you remember it? Anything. Take your childhood. Why do you remember anything in your past? Because it was bold. Has an emotional impact. Thank you. That's why. Right? Yes, bold. You could say yes, but it's because it's emotionally connected. So, did anybody have a pretty rough childhood? Anybody have a rough childhood in here? Okay. Do you remember any specific moments of how bad they were? And guess what? You remember them because they were so emotional. Who remembers something really good from their childhood? There's only two people in here. So I appreciate it because I had a pretty rough childhood. It seems like Anna and you were the only people in here who had a rough childhood. Wow, you guys are very privileged. I'm impressed. It's awesome. Most people have, well, everyone raises their hand because in there, you know, it's, it's, uh, they'll talk about how bad it was. And then you hear their story and you're like, that was nothing. You know, <laughs> let me tell you something worse, but think of the good times. Like I remember, like, I'm, I'll, I'll give you two opposites. I remember when my sister who was mentally handicapped, I was eight years old. And I distinctly remember going to my mother who had just remarried this absolute loser in life. And I said, hey, I'm curious, why is it that he is always in my sister's bed? And I remember her looking at me going, what? I said, well, yeah, why can't he be in my bed too? I was eight years old. And I found out that, of course, right then and there, or within like 24 hours, I never saw him again, ever. I never saw him again. Well, I remember that because I can even imagine it was highly emotional and he was literally molesting a handicapped kid. And that is literally what he was doing. All right. I remember that. You say, oh my gosh, that's a really heavy topic, to, you know, for here. But I also remember the day that I got my brand new BMX Schwinn blue bike on Christmas day. Does anybody remember a particular Christmas or a particular holiday in your life oh, where yeah. you got something? You remember it because it was emotional. So anything in your life, I can promise you, you're going to remember it because of the emotion that happens through it. And if you aren't emotional when you say certain things, well, then you'll never remember them. And yes, you're trying to auto program. You're trying to get to a deeper depth, right? We can talk about affirmations, which oftentimes are statements of power. You can talk about incantations. Anybody know what an incantation is? What's the difference between an affirmation and an incantation. Jason, did I stump you? Stump the chump? Did I stump you? Yeah, I think you're good. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't give it away, did he? Man, <laughs> that should be a, you're right. You should be in politics. I want to check first. <laughs> That's all. Affirmations are what we do. Affirmations, those affirmations were created 14 years ago, and I say created, meaning we sat down and took the foundation of our training and said, all right, let's apply as much as we can into these affirmations. And we went to a number of agents to lie, and I'd say, hey, give me three affirmations. Maybe give me three affirmations. And then we took all of these affirmations and we combined them. So here's the deal. Is every affirmation personal to you? I mean, should you drink water daily? Sounds like a good idea. I mean, years ago, I mean, this is 24 years ago when I was doing these, I remember there was, I do not smoke daily was in there. And I, I took that one out on this next go around, but there was a group of agents that were trying to stop smoking, which was great, right? For them, it was very personalized. But as a general statement, you can read those. Some people say, ah, I'm not really into those. Well, sometimes we're not really into them because they're not as personal. So stating that, what might an incantation be versus an affirmation? Thank you. I wish I had a prize for you. Blue ribbon on your chest. Okay. So an incantation is personal. So let me give you one of my incantations. 
Like one of a simple incantation for me is I can do more and handle more. I am unstoppable. When I am overwhelmed beyond measure, think I can't take anything else on. I say to myself, I can do more. I can handle more. I am unstoppable. When I used to think I couldn't, uh, you know, I, I didn't feel like prospecting, which is what we all do. We, we run our day based on how we feel, which is one of the worst things that you could do in your life based on what you feel. If I allowed my sons to just do what they felt like doing, all they would do is play Call of Duty, drink Mountain Dew, and sit in the room all day. That's probably what they do because that's what they feel like doing. So for me, I said, okay, wait a second here. I don't feel like prospecting. So I came out with an incantation personal to me, which is, I, uh, what, do I, what, do I, what do I say? It doesn't matter how I feel. I do it anyways. It doesn't matter how I feel. It's irrelevant how I feel. And some of us live our lives based on how we feel. And you say, well, isn't that good? I don't know. Is it working out for you economically? Because there's not very many days in my past that I felt like prospecting. And so if I followed how I felt, well, then I wouldn't prospect. Or if I didn't feel like coming in, I wouldn't come in. And so I started creating incantations that are specific to my life and to my world. And to, to shape the life that I wanted to live. I used to hate prospecting. And when that prospecting people, I remember a friend of mine was just texting with him a few days ago, John Rhodes, some of you know him. And I remember John said, do you really love prospecting? This is probably 10 years ago. Do you really love prospecting? And I paused and I said, John, I mean, I kind of like looked out and I'm like, I don't know. I know I don't hate it because man, I used to hate it. And so I created an incantation that was, I love to prospect. I set an appointment every day. Every time I get on a phone, I set an appointment. Every time. And then I would hit my chest. Well, yes. And I would remind myself that I love to prospect. And as time went on, what I started to realize is that I could shape the way that I thought. And that I would say it with tremendous emotion. There was a day in, in 2008 and nine, I was the number one real estate agent in the state of Utah. I would call and make calls like this. Hi, Amy, George Morris with ABC Realty, or it was back then, it was Realty Executive. Hey, I'm just calling, um, uh, if you can find anyone who sold more real estate than me in the state of Utah, sell your home for free. We should chat. And just so you know, I got a lot of attention with that. <laughs> and it was really good because it was kind of fun being number one for a while. And I wasn't selling short sales and bank owned properties and foreclosures. It was everyday type of business and everyday type of deals. And I was brutal about my record, but I earned it because I believed in prospecting. I believed in what I would do. And it became that relevant that I realized I started to love prospecting because I convinced myself. If you were to tell a young child over and over again, how dumb they are, how stupid they are, what do you think they would come up believing? How dumb and stupid they are. And then they would have to spend their life, Delilah. They'd have to spend their life, Jake, trying to unravel that messaging in their head. They'd have to come up with a better message. They'd have to remind themselves how brilliant and smart. And then still, because of someone pounding how dumb they are in their head, they would have to fight that most of their lives. And to accept the fact that that person was wrong and that this is the new message inside of them. And the only way you could fight and fix that message ultimately is based on the emotion that you drive towards it. So remember that as you're moving through this process, don't just work through words. Remind yourself, there's certain affirmation that are very personal for me on that list. I suspect I could take every one of you. And if you looked at that list, you'd be like, man, that one really means a lot to me. That is me. That is really my incantation. And as silly as it may seem like we do these and people go, oh, I feel uncomfortable. I don't want people to hear me stumble or make a mistake. Man, scream it, shout it, because who you are becoming is based on the words and the language that you use. What you say about yourself, what you say to yourself, what you hear in your mind, what you say out loud, that's who you are. You become the person you shape your mind by the words that you say. So just don't underestimate the power of an affirmation. And the words that you say, remember, an affirmation is anything. I, I like to say they can just be powerful statements that you're like, yeah, that's kind of cool. But man, if I'm Kelly, I'm like, I got to figure out like, what do I really want to be my mantra? What is my incantation? 
my incantation that's personal to me. And what am I saying about myself? What do I say about prospecting? What do I say about this business? I remember, I, 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 there's so many other ones I could give you, but the point is, is I started crafting what most people would say, personal affirmations. But really, again, an incantation is something that's very personal to you that you repeat, you speak, and remember. You'll only remember the things that you have tremendous emotion around. So if there's something that's really important to you or you want to eradicate a certain level of thinking out of you, get emotional about it. I don't remember why I was telling the story about being number one, but it's always a fun conversation. <laughs> it's because in 1994, I would drive down 1300 East from our little duplex over on Murray Holiday Road. And I would put on classical slash Baroque music and I would put it on and I would scream at the top of my lungs. I am the number one agent in the state of Utah. Now at the time I was working with and around Joan Pate, who was selling a home a day, first agent in the, United, or in the state of Utah to earn over $1 million in residential sales. And that was 28 years ago she was doing that. 28 years ago, she was selling a home a day. 20 years ago, she already realized what a team was and was crafting and creating one. Now, whether people like her or don't like her, the fact is, is that, man, she sure figured it out. And she is legendary in this industry based on the fact of what she was doing. It wasn't too long ago, one of you aren't in here, but I got a message from Joan not too long ago, one of our agents who, now, mind you, she has sold who knows how many thousands, not a hundred homes, thousands of homes in her 40, 50 years in this business. And I have to tell you, someone called me and said, you know, she said, well, George, they, they said that I probably don't know what I'm doing and that real estate has changed. And I'm not sure if I know how real estate is supposed to be sold in today's marketplace. Of course, Rob had a good laugh. Rob's back there laughing. And it was quite entertaining to hear this new licensee, probably what a year or less in the business, tell us that Joan Payton doesn't know how to sell real estate. It was quite comical because um, she's so legendary. And but back, what she went through too, George, was extraordinary. Yeah, the, the loss of her child, to, uh, Sid's literally at 10 years old, died yeah. in his sleep, 10 years old, it's crazy. So, or maybe eight, I think it was eight actually. I don't know and her was twins, crazy. by the way, I was just talking to her, twins just graduating from the University of Utah. Yeah, and so when she was, she was so heartbroken by it that when she was 52, I think she 52, was, two, she and went and, and uh, had uh, twins. Yep. which was just incredible. He was like, what are you doing? So here she is now in her mid-70s, kind of like Rob, right? Rob is got some young ones. Rob, 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 Rob will, wow. God, Jess, Rob. Good friend, right, Rob? He's not talking about the mid-70s yet. He's talking about the back end. <laughs> Rob, <Right. laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know. So he's projecting 20 years from now. So, so, just, <laughs> this was, my point is, I was screaming and stuff, and I had people around me, Barker, that were number one. I said, I'm going to be that guy. And here it was. That was in 1994, but it wasn't until 2008. So people say, well, it took you that long? Yeah, it took me that long. But I finally figured it out, and I figured out how to do it. And so my point to you is really affirm what you want your life to look like, and speak it, and state it, and recognize that you'll remember nothing unless it's highly emotional. That's why I yell about everything, because I want to remember it, all right? Okay, so with that being said, we're ending at 810, by the way. Deal? Actually, I, just, I'm, I'm, I, I didn't realize that I was getting you guys out of here a few minutes late because I can't see that clock. I want to move that thing. It's driving me nuts. You put it over there so you can see it. You got 10 minutes. I know. No, no. I actually have to tell you, Amy, I check my watch against that so that you know I can look at that because I can't see that. All right, so here we go. So just a couple of things. So on my dry erase board, actually, I, I think I just erased it, but in my office, people have often asked me about this idea of, of belief or what you believe, right? I, mean, I know that's the same word, but what are your beliefs and what do you believe? Now, here's the thing that's interesting. You can change your beliefs any day of the week. Now, so many of you, I know, I, right, I have, have had the you know, privilege of meeting people politically, religiously, and people have certain beliefs. And those beliefs are oftentimes what drive our lives. But those beliefs, I just want to point this out, that what you believe and what you think is something that you can change. You see people change religions. You see them change political positions. 
that you see people change their minds. And although people will like, you change your mind, how dare you? But you can. It's proof that you can. You can change what you believe. And you may say, well, how fast can you do that? You can change it like that. I believe, you just, let's just take this out. I believe I'm a Democrat. Nope, today I believe I'm a Republican. Whoa, well, you can't do that. Why not? So if you can do that, or one day you say, I believe in this church. Oh, no, I now believe in this church. Or that one day they say, I believe in God. No, nope, now I don't believe in God. You say, whoa. Well, yeah, you can change. And people say, well, there's things that happened that made me believe that. Yes, but there was a moment that you made a decision that you said, I believe blank. And just recognize in that you can change what you believe. You can change what you believe about yourself. You can change what you believe about what's possible. You can change what you believe you could do, how much money you could earn, how many deals you could do. You can change it like that. And that's the one important part of this that you recognize you can change a belief instantly. And once you believe you can change a belief instantly, then you better start paying attention to what you believe. So many places in my journal over the years, I write down, I believe dot, dot, dot. And I want to figure out, Amy, what I believe. What do I believe? And it's reasons why I've come up with things like I started asking better questions. I started not worrying about whether the answer was right or wrong. And once I became unafraid of asking the question, because I wasn't afraid of the answer I might get, then all of a sudden I started asking better questions because I wanted to figure out at my journey in life, what do I believe? Do I believe what everyone else told me or do I believe it? Do I believe because someone said that's what I'm supposed to believe? So that's what I believe. And I want to know, well, wait, what they said I should believe, do I actually believe that? Whether it was my mom, my dad, maybe it was religious leaders, friends, family, mentors, coaches, what do I believe? And look, I just want to point something out. Write this down. You are a product. Write this down. Put it in your phone. Put it somewhere. Just remember this. I am a product of my history until, it's the key point here, until I wake up. I am a product of my history until I wake up. So if I wake up, all of a sudden, I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't want to repeat what that was in my family, or I don't want to be doing this. And Well, I don't believe it because you are a product of your history until you wake up. And here's the deal, man. Some people never wake up, and they're in their 60s, 70s, 80s, and they're still living as, you know, where they say, well, yeah, but my dad was an alcoholic. Well, yeah, but my mom did this, and my dad did that. And this person did this, and my brother did that, and my friend said that, and these teachers did that. You're 70 years old. Wake up. Wake up, man. But there's not an awakening because you're a product of your history until you wake up. Could you tell okay? Justin who's watching at home in bed that he needs to wake up? Justin, wake up. <laughs> Justin Trashansky, wake up. All right. <laughs> I'm serious. And the thing is, is that sometimes we just move through our life and we just go through it and we never really figure out what we're believe, what we believe. And so once you start to realize what you believe, now, can you develop a belief? Yes, people develop a belief based on circumstances, events, things that happen to them, people they associate with, the, uh, just uh, their surroundings, their culture, their environment. And yes, they start to develop a belief. But I can tell you that if you can integrate your life with what you believe, and then you can live your life with what we would call integrity, integrity, right? And you live a life because you integrated what you believe in relationship, the life you live, the integrity of your life, then all of a sudden, I can tell you, life is so much better when that happens. So in so many terms, wake up and stop living your life based on just your history and live the life that you want to design. That's why you always hear from me. Live a life that you design, that is purposeful. Now, look, for you, if, if you're a person of faith, great. Get a confirmation. You know, great. You know, get down on your knees. You know, meditate, visualize, pray. Come to some understanding of how am I going to integrate what I believe so I can live a life of integrity. And once you start realizing that you're less committed to looking good and what everyone else is going to say and 
who's going to shame you or say what they're going to say or do what they're going to do to you because of what you do and live your life by, all of a sudden you start to live a life that is dripping within your life with integrity because you become who you believe you're supposed to be. You become who you believe in. You're, you become who you or what you who you become what you believe. And all of a sudden you're integrated and you are whole and you're one. You know, some people say one with my creator. Great, one with your creator. But you're one. You're whole. You're complete. You're perfected. These words come because all of a sudden your life aligns with what you believe. And the more alignment in this business and in your life that you can get, the better your life will become. And you'll have more joy, more happiness, more peace, more stillness, because you'll be integrated with what you believe and then what you're doing. And when those things come together, you start living a life that is so powerful and unstoppable and beautiful that every part of your business, business, business will be the easy part because of your integration of what you believe and what you do. Make sense? Yeah. Love it. Any thoughts? So wake up. Because if you don't wake up, you're just a cause or a past of your history. That's what you're living by. If you aren't conscious, awake, mindful, whatever word resonates for you, conscious, awake, mindful, right? Wake up. Two more minutes. <laughs> Which I get. <laughs> From that, this gives you the way that you think. This gets to the way that you feel. This goes to the way in which you act. And this equals the results of your life. Just as a reminder, do not underestimate that what you believe, if you believe that prospecting works, your thoughts will be about how excited you are to prospect. Can't wait to prospect. Who am I going to call today? Who do I get to talk to? Because that will be your thoughts. When you believe that prospecting works, you think differently, you feel differently, you act differently, and your results become different. That's the way the game works in any area of your life. If think about it, I don't like knocking doors nor i'm not a door knocker i i only like to call okay so if someone took you out to go and knock doors well you'd be thinking the whole time this is horrible this doesn't work i hate this how would you feel horrible taut i'm sweating can't believe i'm out here no one's ever home you'd go do the action but you'd be like the two-year-old who stomps to their room because they were four-year-old who's putting time out or it says go to the room so you'd stomp to your room or stomp through the streets of Salt Lake City trying to make some contacts and what do you think your results would be? They'd be horrible because a poor belief aligned with poor thinking, poor feelings, actions, and results, you're never going to get the results that you want. So just come back here. Get serious about figuring out what you believe. What's your philosophy? What's your understanding? What's your belief about prospecting, lead follow-up, price reductions, taking listings, working buyers, knocking doors. You say, I'm supposed to come to the conclusion of what I believe with all those? Yes, because if you are not integrated with your belief and your actions, you will be a weak person walking out into this marketplace. And this world right now needs tremendous amounts of certainty. So when you aren't clear on what you believe and you tiptoe around and you're like, well, I'm gonna try door knocking. Hi, how are you? <laughs> and there's like, and they're like, um, good, not interested. Not interested because you showed up weak, not integrated with what you believe and what you do. And when you show up weak, no one is going to follow you. No one. So if you aren't setting up appointments, if you aren't having enough contacts, if you aren't having enough success, take a step back and ask yourself, hold on a second here. What do I believe? And I've got to get to a place of integrity where I've integrated my actions and my beliefs and they are one. And when you do that, you will live the life that you're destined to live. And I'm doing the same thing in areas of my life. This is a process, I believe, for your whole life. So it's not just a one off. It's not like, well, yeah, I check, I did it one time. No, do this over and over and over again. What do I believe? What am I doing? What do I believe? What am I doing? What do I believe? What am I doing? Okay, what are the results? Oh, wait, my belief is really screwing this thing up. And get it dialed in and figure out what you believe and integrate your actions along with your beliefs and live the life in this business and your whole life the way you're supposed to. All right, let's go.